Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. The Kyungi Province Special Judicial Police recently apprehended more than 90 violators of Development Restriction Zone regulations in the province. Violations included illegal development activities as well as the installation and operation of containers, greenhouses and factories without permission. The Provincial Judicial Police also reported the illegal activities to local governments for necessary administrative actions. On August 6th, Kyungi Province held a public meeting on farmer basic income, which the province plans to introduce for the first time in Korea. Held at the Seoul AT Center and hosted by the Kyungi Agri-Food Institute, this meeting saw the participation of more than 20 specialists and farmer organization representatives. Kyungi Province's Farmer Basic Income Policy is geared to pay a certain amount to farmers in the form of local currency. During the meeting, participants shared diverse opinions on social acceptance and dissemination of the Farmer Basic Income Policy. Kyungi Province will continue intensive crackdowns on five types of illegal activities along coastal areas, including the installation of illegal beach, shipping port and fishing port structures, as well as illegal fishing activities and trash disposal until the end of August. Since January, approximately 570 metric tons of trash has been removed from coastal areas, while beaches and ports have been transformed through the removal of illegal structures. During a press briefing held on August 10th, Agricultural and Maritime Administration Director General Kim chung Bom expressed determination to create clean coastal environments through the eradication of illegal activities that have long been overlooked. The House of Sharing, a residential facility operator for former sexual slaves of the Japanese military, received donations amounting to 8.8 .8 billion Korean won, but transferred only 200 million Korean won to its facilities. Even this transferred amount was used primarily to cover indirect facility management costs instead of direct service costs for residents. The related investigation team proposed the formation of a public and private committee to restore normal house of sharing operations. 이번 민관 합동 조사에서 드러난 나눔의 집 법인이나 시설의 여러 법령 위반 행위 등은 on August 8th, the first phase of the Hanam Line, a subway Line 5 extension that connects Hanam City to downtown Seoul, was opened. This extension spans a 4.7 km section and covers three stations Sangildong Station in Seoul, the previous end of subway Line 5, as well as Misa Station and Pungsan Station in Hanam City. Completed in 65 months following the commencement of work in 2015, the opening of this first section will significantly improve traffic during commuting hours for Hanam City residents. On August 11th, Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung and CJ Live CEO Kim Chun Su signed an agreement to cooperate in K Culture Valley development. Encompassing a performance arena with a 42,000 seat capacity, as well as other entertainment facilities, K Culture Valley will be developed as a Korean Wave Contents Park, with its opening slated for 2024. This agreement is expected to give new momentum to this long-delayed project. Kyungi Province recently hosted a meeting to discuss ways in which to improve inter-Korean relations. Held at the Kyungi Provincial Government Complex on August 12th, this meeting saw participation by Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung, Democracy, Peace and Unification Advisory Committee Vice Chair Jung Se Hyun, former Minister of Unification Lee Jong Suk, and National Assembly Member Yoon Gun Young. Major topics included the evaluation of Kyungi's anti Pyongyang leaflet launch prevention measures and the province's role in inter Korean exchange and cooperation. 
Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.